I can almost stick my entire finger in this one, guys. That is an actual mark. I can see it into down there. What's up, YouTube? We have our best one yet for you guys. So we are in a lot of the different owners forums throughout Facebook and every place else where people congregate that you own a Tesla or thinking about buying a Tesla. And they're talking about the different things that they're looking for. Well, one thing we see all the time in these forums is everybody is looking for a delivery day checklist. In this video, we're going to take a look at a walkthrough of what you should do when delivery day comes and you go to accept delivery of your model. Why. Down in the description below is also a link for you guys where you can go ahead and download the delivery day checklist that we created for you guys free of charge. It gives you a step-by-step -step list of things that will help you along your delivery day. I know everybody's saying, hey Chris, what is this? That looks like a Model S. That doesn't look like your Model Y. <gasps> You're correct, it's not. This is, this is definitely a Model S. Our Model Y is actually in the shop at the moment. We have a video that's gonna be coming out on this in about a few weeks and what kind of happened. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. For right now, this is a Model S. This is a loaner that Tesla gave us while they're fixing our Model Y. So uh, we're gonna work with what we got, which is a 2015 Model S P90D. Now I know you're thinking, oh man, that is so sweet. They gave you a P90D. Yeah, that, that sounds really cool and it sounds really awesome but let me tell you this thing is on some serious lockdown okay it's stuck in chill mode i can't use any of the performance features i can't put it in insane mode i can't put it in insane plus this thing is on lockdown but this is the, the car that we're going to use as our test subject so let's uh let's jump right into it after you order your model y honestly it's probably the toughest part of the entire process is the next step and that's waiting. This is where you go and you enter that borderline stalkerish type of stage. You're constantly going in every day, checking on order status to see if a VIN's been assigned, if your estimated delivery date has moved at all. I gotta tell you guys, I was up to about uh, three checks a day before our Model Y arrived. Uh, it's pretty frustrating. For those of you guys who are OGs that have been here back from the beginning, at one point we had our VIN number was assigned to us and then it just disappeared. And then our estimated delivery date section, that disappeared. But all in all, everything came through and everything worked out. Once you notice that they have assigned a VIN number, that is when you can go ahead and add that VIN number to your policy. Once they send you your ID card, you're then going to upload that ID card. Once they get confirmation that your car is in route, and pretty close to the service center, they will reach out to you to go ahead and schedule your delivery date. Now, one thing you guys will notice on the checklist that we created for you guys is we kind of broke it up into sections for you. Trust me when I say you wanna take your time and look for this stuff. A lot of people feel like I feel so weird and uncomfortable about it. I totally understand it. I sit here and I talk to a camera with lots of people in my neighborhood that walk around. Sometimes I talk to this camera when I'm in public. <laughs> I totally understand what it likes to feel awkward. Trust me, I do. But this is your time to make sure the car is exactly what you want. The SAs, they're used to this. They expect you to do that. Take your time, walk through, look for everything. There are certain topics that are super highly debatable. Panel gaps being probably the first and foremost. Again, going back to the OG days of the channel, I was driving a, a literally brand new Ford Explorer. When I took it off the rental lot, it, the thing had 10 miles on it, it was brand new. And I actually did a walk around of that vehicle and I found tons of panel gaps. I found a couple little pieces where there was weather stripping that was like kind of protruding through the slot of the door. Every car manufacturer has some issues. Every one, even the Mercedes and Lexus is out there. there are tiny little imperfections that exist. All right guys, so delivery day has come. You printed out your delivery day checklist provided by Rocket Tech. They bring you out and they show you your car. So the first thing that you wanna do is obviously you wanna check the car itself, the color of the car, the model, all that stuff. Now let's get into the big stuff, the exterior walks that you're gonna be doing around. The first exterior walk that you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna pay attention to things like panel gaps, misaligned panels, 
and any type of major dense marks or scratches. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this Model F as our example vehicle. Now, one thing to note is this isn't a brand new car, right? This is a 2015. Now, it is low mileage. It only has about 28,000 miles on it. It's got a little extra love in it, right? So we're gonna take that into account. So let's go ahead and take a walk around and show you guys what I'm talking about. So when you're taking a look at it, you wanna take a look at these gaps right here. Now, this is actually a pretty big gap. In 2015, this is kind of the things that you would see. You see how this is, this is really big. Do you, uh, do you see how you can even, you can see the weather stripping in there, like underneath. This is a gap that you will typically see. See how that is nice and aligned. I mean, it's, it's not exactly flush, but it actually isn't flush. Maybe I wouldn't accept it. Um, but you can see the distance between the panels is, is it, it's pretty standard, right? There's nothing really big there. And then all of a sudden you get up to this, that's a really big panel gap. And then we go ahead and we, you look all around the panel gaps around the hood. All this looks good. You have another giant panel gap right here. I can almost stick my entire finger in this one, guys. The shadows are pretty bad, but I can almost stick my entire finger in this panel gap. And then you'll notice it gets smaller as you go up. So here's the giant part. When we go up the hood, it gets a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And then right up here, this is acceptable. This is, this gap distance right here is kind of what you want. See how all this is, all well, that's fine. And then all of a sudden you get to about here and it starts to really widen all the way down. So I would have absolutely have said something about that. These are the panel gaps that I'm talking about, guys. These are the things that you gotta be, uh, you just gotta be your own advocate and be on the lookout for. This is not a big panel gap. Just try to use your best judgment when you're trying to decide if something is really big or not. And if you're unsure, ask the sales associate that's helping you. What they will do is they will likely have somebody come out and take a look at it, and they will see whether or not it is within their standard range or whether it is not. Other panel gaps to kind of be concerned about. That's a common spot where there has been pretty big panel gaps before in the past. Now, in the Model Y in particular, there was a very long period where these doors weren't sitting flush. All you do is you take your finger and just rub it along the top. <laughs> I understand that this is a little bit of a dry topic today that we're talking about, guys. So this is just the type of highbrow comedy that we like to bring in order to make it a little bit more entertaining for you. In ours and most Model Ys that are coming out nowadays, it seems like they have fixed that issue. It doesn't seem to be a problem anymore, but just something to kind of check when you're looking at your car. And this isn't just for Model Ys. This is for any Tesla when you're buying it. Check for these panel gaps. Check to make sure everything is flush. In the back, same thing. Make sure it sits flush. That's good. This is another common panel gap spot right here. This is pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> I can see it into down there. I, I'd be curious to take a look at the other side. Same thing here. I mean, you look down the trunk. I feel like this is, I mean, again, I could fit almost my entire finger in this. This is probably why this vehicle is a loner. My guess is somebody would, was supposed to buy this, but they refused delivery due to these huge panel gaps that are in here. Uh, now you continue to look down here, that same size gap kind of comes down. It gets a little bit better down here. Uh, it's not that bad right there. See, this side is a little bit better. This, this is more kind of what I expect. It, I, can't, I can't fit my finger in here. It, there's still a gap, but there has to be, right? Because the part has to be able to move and, and without hitting anything. But this seems a little bit better. I can't see all the way inside of the trunk through this gap. Whereas on the other side, I could. Oh man, that was one sick bird. Coming back over to the doors. Yep, they're sitting flush. The door gaps are fine. These all look good. Here, this sits flush. That's good. Those gaps are fine. Over here, the pillar right here into the quarter panel. That looks fine as well. Uh, and then we're back to where we started. The other thing you want to check as well is you want to make sure that your charger port door also sits flush. That's kind of been a, a little bit of an issue too in some vehicles where it doesn't sit flush and it's kind of cockeyed. Water could then get in there. So you want to go ahead and make sure that your charger port door sits flush. This one sits perfect. Minus some of the panel gaps here. And then on that front hood, those are really huge. The rest of the car actually seems fine from a, from a panel gap issue. You can always ask them and just show them and they'll let you know, hey, this is something we can fix. You can even ask that they fix it on the spot before you leave. Some things they're able to, some things they're not. The other thing you wanna keep an eye out for is any type of paint imperfections. Sometimes when Teslas arrive, they could have either a paint chip or a mark or something like that. So just give it a good look over, make sure that there's no issues. You also wanna give the wheels a good 
look over as well. And make sure that there's no curb rash already. You wanna make sure there's no marks on those beautiful wheels that you get as well. Right, so one of the first things you wanna do when you're checking the interior of the vehicle is you wanna check the upholstery, the seats, all of that stuff. I hate to use the term common because none of these are really truly common, but these are the issues that I see pop up the most out of all of them. Give your seats a good look over. Make sure there's no indentations. Uh, make sure there's no rips, tears, any of that stuff. And this is something that you should really do with any new car that you buy. Whether it's a Tesla, a Ford, or Mercedes, doesn't really matter. You should be checking the upholstery on the inside and making sure it looks good. Here on the Model S, we can see the Model S looks good. Uh, these seats are in fantastic condition. No rips, tears, or marks whatsoever. You also want to give a look over to the upholstery on the top as well. This uh, right up here, along the pillars especially, you wanna give a good look. Sometimes what can happen, like right here, I don't know if you guys can see that mark right there. That mark, that is not a shadow, that is an actual mark. For some reason, even though these cars don't have a combustion engine or a transmission in them, the mechanics at Tesla, for some reason, they seem to have very greasy fingers. I don't think it's something that's intentional, they just kinda did it and they didn't realize it and they didn't go back and clean it. Give a good look over, especially these pillars, Make sure you don't see any fingerprint marks. If you do, let them know, they will clean it. The next thing you wanna do, obviously, is check the details of your vehicle. Now, in this case, obviously, we have a loaner vehicle here, but you wanna press that car button on the bottom, and then you wanna go up to the vehicle itself and check the details of it. You wanna check the VIN number, make sure it matches the paperwork, check to make sure that the specs are correct on it. It's saying down here, any additional packages that you bought, like full self-driving, make sure that that's showing up there as well. You wanna go through the screen itself, make sure it looks good. Make sure there's no chips, marks, or cracks on the screen. The screen should still have its original screen protector on it, the little plastic piece. And hopefully you brought your new screen protector that you purchased, maybe from, you know, Abstract Ocean. Feel free to use the link below that for the one that we use. It is absolutely amazing. It comes with the easiest install kit ever in the world. Link in the description below. Also, if you use that link, you'll get 10% off as well. So some of the other things you wanna do when you're checking out your car is really the same things that you would do with any other car. You wanna check the stereo, you wanna check the wipers, blink lights, all that stuff. Make sure everything is working perfect and the exact way that you want it to. Check out the horn. Make sure it all is working. If there's any imperfections you find, you want to try and find it before you leave. You show the SA, they make a note of it. If they can repair it right then and there, they will. If not, there's at least documentation that you showed it to them that it was there before you took delivery. Now, Tesla is usually pretty good if you find anything within the first 24 to 48 hours after bringing your vehicle home, because sometimes those things do happen. Tesla is usually pretty good about still honoring it. Just make sure you alert them right away. Don't waste any time. Document, take a picture of it, send it in they will usually address it and make good on it for you guys. Enjoy it, have fun, pick it up, be excited about it. If you used our referral code, take a picture of yourself on delivery day and send it to us. Email's right here, guys. Send us a picture, we'll give you a proper shout out. Enjoy your delivery day, don't stress out over it. Use the checklist, it's there to help you guys. Again, it's a free download. It's just there to help you to remember a few things as you kind of go along. So I hope this video helped you guys out with going into accepting delivery of your Tesla that you've been waiting for. If you found this video helpful, make sure to chuck a link on it below. Hey guys, give us a follow on our socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're always posting great information on there as well. We always post whenever there's a new video launching on there as well. Speaking of which, if you're not subscribed yet, what, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're in the market to buy your own Tesla, guys, make sure to use a referral code. Who knows how long the referral program is still going to be around. Take advantage of it while it still is. Get your free 1,000 supercharger miles. If you don't know anybody that has one, you're more than welcome to use ours. Ours is in the description down below. Thanks as always, guys, and we'll see you in another one real soon.